The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Mr. Birthday, starring Gene Lockhart and Gene Raymond. Anne Blythe is your hostess. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Isn't it true most of us have moments of discouragement? And sometimes they come when we have tirelessly done our best, only to see our efforts misjudged and criticized. Oh, I don't mean we should begin to feel sorry for ourselves. I'm talking about the unnecessary misunderstandings and criticisms that happen in a home. You know, a good home is a place where there's mutual trust and encouragement and forgiveness. These are the things that make for a full life, for happiness and success. And family prayer brings trust, encouragement, and forgiveness into a home. Why? Well, when a family joins together to express their faith and trust in God, when they ask his help and forgiveness in family prayer, there's a new spirit of faith and trust in one another, a new spirit of mutual encouragement and forgiveness. You'll find that family prayer brings these things to a home. It happens that way. Yes, a family at prayer is a family at peace. A prayerful home is a happy home. Anne Blythe, your family theater hostess for this evening, will speak again following tonight's presentation, Mr. Birthday, starring Jean Raymond and Jean Lockhart. I'm Tom West. I'm a reporter for the Evening Dispatch. And I guess I have the softest new newspaper job in the world. All I do is ride around in a limousine with a pleasant little old man and write a feature story about him every day. Well, maybe it doesn't sound exciting to you, but I've been in a spin ever since I met the old fellow about six months ago. You see, it happened this way. I was out on a story for the Dispatch talking with a Mrs. Varga in her dingy three-room apartment in the Tenement House District. It was a hot and sticky day. I don't see why your paper is interested in me and my children, Mr. West. Now, we're interested in doing these articles to see if we can improve the crowded tenement house conditions. I am not complaining. I know. We have a roof over our heads. There is enough to eat for all of us. Oh, it is not nearly so good as this in the old country where my sister still lives. Well, my newspaper thinks conditions like this can be made better. Should be made better. And so we're... I saw it. I saw his auto. Oh, he won't come here. He doesn't know about me. Well, that's what you think. He didn't know me either, but he can't. Boys, boys, don't you see I have a caller? Oh, I'm sorry, Mom, but the kids Shh. said... That... That's enough, Teddy. Go back outside. I'll call you when something to eat is ready. Can I stay in here just until he... Uh, just for a little bit, please? I'll be quiet. <laughs> they don't bother me, Mrs. Barger. Are these your children? <laughs> Daddy is. Billy lives upstairs. Oh, I, see. I have two other boys and one girl. Hmm. A fine family. And, and they're fine children, too. Oh, it's always that way. Knock, knock, all day long. Oh, I'm Oh, that's sorry. him, Willie. I'll bet you. Say, maybe... Yeah, that's the way he knocks. Always. It's a salesman. All day long. Excuse me. Mrs. Varga? Mister, I don't want to buy anything. <laughs> that's what everyone says when they see my bundles. But I'm not selling anything. I came to see Teddy. May I come in? Teddy? Is he in trouble, mister? Is my little I'm Teddy... Teddy, mister. Of course, so you are. Shake hands, sonny. Happy birthday to you. What? Happy birthday to you. Hey, Happy birthday, dear Teddy. Oh, Happy birthday to you. Gee, 
he was. <laughs> His birthday, <laughs> he's nine today, mm -hmm. and, and I forgot. Oh, that's why I'm here, Mrs. Barker. There are lots of people who have so many other things to worry about, they forget the children's birthdays. So I drew the remembering for them. Here, Teddy, some presents for you. Gosh, all that for me? All for you, Teddy. He's a fine boy, Mrs. Varga. Well, I'll be off. This is my busy day. Bye, Teddy. So long, everyone. Well, let's see what you got, Teddy. Yeah, open them up. Well, here, let me open them. Hey, quit shoving, Willie. <laughs> Boys, please. I wouldn't have missed that for anything. I'd like to have met your funny friend. Is he one of your neighbors? Friend? Neighbor? I never saw the men before. Really? You mean he's a stranger? Oh, he's around this neighborhood lots of times. He brings presents to the kids. You mean he's a kind of a uh, birthday man? Yeah, I guess so. Say, say, don't let him get away. I, I, I got an idea. I want to talk to him. Oh, you're leaving, Mr. West? Yeah, yeah, I'll be back later. Oh, boy, what a yawn this is. An interview with, with Mr. Birthday. Well, I missed him that day and the next. In fact, it was nearly two weeks before I ran across him again in the same neighborhood. He was an odd little man, with a twinkle in his eyes and a perpetual grin. And he never seemed to walk. He bounced. And when I saw him next, he was bouncing out of another tenement building and driving away. I had a little luck drive, grabbing a taxi. Yeah, mister? Now follow that green car and step on it. You, uh, cop, mister? No, I'm a reporter, and there goes the biggest news story of the year. Don't let him get away. Well, you okay, but if you was a cop chasing that old geezer, well, I'd let him lose us in a hurry. He's okay, see? Uh -huh. Maybe he acts crazy, but take it from me, bud. He's got a heart as big as a... as a... Well, it's big, yeah, see? Yeah, well, just don't lose him. I've been hunting him for two weeks. Don't worry. I'll stick to him like a bloodhound. Add up, boy. Mr. Birthday finally stopped in front of another tenement. He took a couple of packages from his auto and scooted into the building. I paid off the cabbie, and then I got an idea. I jumped into the old fellow's car and waited. And when he came back... Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. I thought this was my... Uh, <laughs> why, why, it is my car. Young man, what are you doing in my automobile? Waiting for you. I'm Tom West, Evening Dispatch. Oh, well, uh, glad to know you. Uh, now, if you won't think I'm rude, I have three or four more I just want to talk to I... you for a couple of minutes, Mr. Birthday. Huh? What's that? What did you say? What did you call me? Mr. Birthday. Oh. Well, I don't know your real name. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Yes, sir, that's wonderful. Mr. Birthday. Oh, I like that. And what is your name? Why, that's it. You just said it, Mr. Birthday. Oh, I wouldn't have any other now. Oh, but please, I, I do have to get along. Now, wait a minute. Can't we talk just a little? There are so many things I want to know about Why? you. Why? Well, I've told you I'm a reporter. What? I need more facts for my story about A story? You. About me? Sure. I want to know more about what you're doing and why and what you expect to get out of it. What I expect? Uh-huh. Young man, look me straight in the eye. Now, tell me, my lad, do you honestly think I profit out of what I'm doing? Do you? Uh, well, maybe I didn't exactly say it the way I meant it, but... Now, look, Mr. Birthday, let's be practical. What's your racket? What's the pitch in this birthday gimmick? Huh? Uh, I, uh, I can't talk any longer. I oh, have no. to go. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Birthday. I'm sorry if I spoke out of turn. Uh, maybe you wouldn't mind if I rode along with you, huh? Well, um, provided you don't ask me to do any talking for publication. Okay, let's go, Mr. Birthday. I won't write a thing against your wishes. But I'm going to try doggone hard to get you to change your mind. No, 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 no publicity. I don't want people to think I'm running some kind of a racket. <laughs> well, my boy, now you just keep your eyes and ears open for the next hour or so, and then you'll know the whole story, and you'll realize why it would be wrong to print anything about it. Ah, uh, Mr. Birthday, I'll bet you at dinner tonight that you're wrong. I'll bet I get your permission to write a story. <laughs> That's a fair bet. <laughs> oh, isn't it a glorious day? Hmm? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Tired, Tom? Uh, not exactly, but, 
I've never climbed so many steps as I've done this past hour. I suppose you had to live on the top floor of one of these tents. Yeah, I'd rather not think about it. How many more calls to make? Just one. Jimmy's the last one today. Uh, I've gotten a terrific wallop out of all this. Watching the kids' faces light up when you hand them their presents. <laughs> sing your little song for them. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. A while ago, you asked me what I expected to get out of this, didn't you? Yeah. I know now. I want to apologize for that question. Forget it, Tom. Forget it. Here's Jimmy's plate. I hope he's home. Yeah? What do you want? Jimmy? May I come in, please? Hello, Jimmy. Nobody's home but me. If you want Mommy, you better come back tomorrow. No, Sonny. I came to see you. Why? Why? Why, you've been crying. Here, yeah, let's get rid of some of those tears. Huh? Oh, me? Yes. <laughs> no, I ain't been crying. What do you want, mister? Listen, Jimmy. Listen. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jimmy. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. <laughs> Gee. How'd you know that? Why, Jimmy, I make it my business to know. I know your mother's working tonight, and I know, at least I suspect... She's been so busy trying to earn money for food and clothes and the rent, she didn't remember your birthday today. Am I right? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, only... I just figured she forgot. I never thought why she didn't remember. Come here, Jimmy. Sit down on this sofa. Yeah. Beside Tom and me. There. Do you see this box? That's your birthday present. And this one. And this. Mine? Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, mister. <laughs> Why, that's the most I ever got on my birthday. <laughs> I always had a sort of imagine like I was getting lots and lots of things. I'd pretend I was having a big party with ice cream and cake. <laughs> Jimmy, before you get too absorbed in those boxes, I want to tell you a little story about a boy I knew, at just your age, too, and who had the same disappointments you've had. Is it some kid I know? Hank Peters, maybe? Oh, I know Hank, too, but that's not who it is. As a matter of fact, he isn't a kid anymore this boy that I'm talking about. But when he was, his mother was poor. She did dressmaking when she could. She counted her pennies very carefully to make sure that this young fellow would have enough to eat. And it wasn't easy for her either, I'll tell you that. My mom's always had to work, and work hard. I know. And just like this young fellow I'm talking about, I guess you've had a pretty lonesome time when your mother's away working every night, huh? Yeah. Well, my friend used to see other kids have birthday parties and get gifts, but... Well, he, he just never had anything like that at all. And that's why it hurt so much when nobody remembered to say happy birthday to him. And each year he'd wait, and nobody remember. And then at night, he'd crawl into bed and pray that next year, somebody would think of it. And he'd say to himself, happy birthday, and cry himself to sleep. Gee, I know how he felt all right. That's why I was crying when you came in. But I didn't want to say so. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of, Jimmy. Why, even grown men cry. A little bit. Now and then. I wouldn't give you two cents for a man who couldn't cry if he felt like doing it. I guess I was just sort of lonesome or something. That's it, sure. Well, anyhow, this boy made up his mind that when he grew up, if he had enough money, he'd try to see to it that other boys and girls with forgotten birthdays would get a surprise from him. He'd remember them. And he'd drop in to see them just for a minute and let them know that at least he remembered. Just like you did tonight? Why, yeah. Just like I did. Well, Jimmy, when your mother comes home from work tonight, you give her a great big hug and thank her for being your mother. Why, that's even more important, I think, than having her tell you happy birthday. Gosh, when you think of it, she's the one who ought to get a present on my birthday. She already did, Jimmy. She got you. The finest little present any mother would want. Come on, Tom. Good night, and lots of luck to you, Jimmy. Well, Tom? Dinner's on me, Mr. Birthday. You win. Ah. <laughs> 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 Fine dinner, Tom, and I was pretty hungry, too. Mm, so was I. Now, waiter, check, please. Uh, just, just a minute. Uh, waiter, I'll take that. 
Oh, what do you mean? It's mine. I lost the bet. I'm not going to write the story. Tom, I'll be disappointed if you don't. Huh? Say, hey, what is all this? You're, you're... I'm just a batty old man exercising a woman's prerogative, the right to change her mind, and I've changed mine. I don't get it. Tom, back there at Jimmy's house, I sold myself on the story. You mean the story you told the kid? Uh, were you just trying to make him feel a little better, or was there really a boy like that? Both, Tom. Uh, and that boy's a pretty old boy now, isn't he? Knocking himself out, hustling around to see youngsters on their birthdays. <laughs> it's funny about most people who've grown up, Tom. They forget so easily what it was like being a kid. Is that why you decided to change your mind about the newspaper story? Oh, that. I'm sorry. I guess I was wandering a little. Uh, I started to say that as things are now, I only see oh, 20 or 30 youngsters a week because I don't have any more birth dates than that. Yeah. Now, maybe if you wrote a story saying that your paper wanted to know the birthdays of all the children in town, we'd get lots of new names, we'd get addresses. Say, that's it. That's it, Mr. Birthday, only... Now, wait a minute. There's got to be more to the story than that. We've got to yeah. tell about you. Oh, no, no, no. Keep me out of it. Oh, you just try to keep out of it. Well, at least let me stay in the background. Now, look, I'll write the story. And if the people who read it are satisfied to let you stay in the background, fine. Otherwise... All I care about is getting a bigger y list of youngsters to visit. You write the story, Tom, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Now, may I have the check? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first bet I've ever enjoyed losing. <laughs> Well, sir, the editor of the dispatch hopped right on Mr. Birthday's bandwagon and gave the story a big spread on page one. Of course, we didn't expect any mail the first day, but we did think there might be a few letters the second. Well, there were a few, but not as many as I'd hoped for. I was feeling low, but not Mr. Birthday. Tom, I think it's fine of your editor to give you this assignment. <laughs> he said I wasn't going to let you get out of my sight. But frankly, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed in getting only 12 letters. Well, I'm not, because I've found that when you try to do something for people, it's awful hard to convince them you're sincere. They're always looking for what they call uh, your angle. Yeah. Now, don't rub it in. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> oh, here we are. Is uh, this uh, Pinky Fisher's place? Uh-huh. He's nine today. Oh. I, uh, think I hear someone coming. Yeah? What do you want? Mr. Fisher? What's it to you? Well, uh, 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 uh nothing exactly. I, um, I want to see Pinky. Uh, may we come in? Oh, no, you don't. I see guys like you before work your way into the house. Then flop down and start selling something. But we aren't selling it. Oh, I... you guys bill collectors, huh? Beat it, but I ain't interested. But, uh, You want I should hook you down the stairs? I said beat it. Why that big lot? Control yourself, Tom. Poor fellow, maybe he's bothered by a toothache. A toothache? I'd like to knock his block I off. I heard that. Huh? There's going to be any slugging. Let's get started. I told you to beat it now. I'll wrap you around the old goat's neck. Now, Tom, wait a on. minute. Now, no, wait a minute. business. Hurry, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess he decided not to follow us. He's huh? probably standing outside his door laughing. <laughs> oh, well, it takes all kinds of people to... Excuse me, mister. Huh? Oh. Well, hello, Sonny. You're Mr. Birthday, ain't you? That's right. I'm Pinky Fisher. Oh. I slipped out the back way when I heard Pa giving you the business. You did? Well, good for you, Pinky. You gotta excuse Pa. He ain't feeling so well since he got laid off work. Oh. I want to apologize for him. Now, Pinky, you just forget about it. And say, uh, now that you're here... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pinky. Happy birthday to you. Golly, <laughs> that's sure swell singing. Uh, thank you, Pinky. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here, I'm, I'm getting awful tired carrying these presents of yours. Suppose you just take them, hmm? And happy birthday, son. Oh, and tell your dad I hope he finds a job real soon. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot, Mr. Birthday. <laughs> now, there's a kid who will get along in the world. Any kid will if he gets half a chance, Tom. It's just a few inches difference between a slap in the face and a pat on the back. <laughs> All of a sudden, it happened. It looked like every kid in the state had grabbed a pencil and started writing letters to Mr. Birthday. Tom 
Tom, it's wonderful. All I need now are about a hundred helpers. It's me. As long as we've been selling birthday cards, we've never had an order this large. A hundred thousand birthday cards. Well, it's amazing. Tom, huh? don't let them in. It's those crazy people from Hollywood, uh -oh. the picture people. They want to make a picture of my life. <laughs> Why, they're offering $50,000 for the rights. No. And now for the melody that hits the number one spot in popularity this week. Mr. Birthday's recording of The Birthday Song. <laughs> I tell you, Tom, it's perfectly ridiculous. But it's different. You have to grant that. <laughs> and I won't have to endorse any more cereal? No, they <laughs> simply want you to run as candidate for the presidency. But I don't get it. It, it. it can't be the Republican or the Democrat, so there's... No, they're starting a new party. Huh? They're calling it the birthday party. Believe me, those were hectic weeks for Mr. Birthday. At times, he used to say that maybe he'd just run away from it all, but he never did. He just kept going along. And the way things were arranged, it wasn't possible for him to call on all the children in person. Instead, he sent greeting cards, presents, and a record of the happy birthday song. Of course, he went to see as many youngsters as he could. Then one day, something went wrong. He was returning to the new offices we had opened. I met him as he was entering the building. Oh, Tom, this has been a bad day. Hmm? Ever since I got up, I've been bothered by something. Something I should remember, and for the life of me, I don't know what it is. Hmm. A new address, maybe? I don't know. My, my mind's a complete blank. Well, don't worry about it. You'll think of it. Just take it easy. You know, there's something else I don't understand today. What's that? I called on 15 youngsters, and none of them was at home. Now, hmm. this is the first time that that has ever uh -oh. happened. Uh... Don't look now, Mr. Birthday. Huh? There are a couple of cops standing alongside your car. Uh, they, they look too old to be on my list. Say, I know them. That's Ed Pierce and Joe Rogers, cruiser men. Hi, Joe. Uh, how are you, Tom? We're looking for this birthday guy of yours. Oh? The chief said to pick him up. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Mr. Birthday. Oh, so you're the guy. <laughs> I don't think we need the straight jacket, Ed. Nah. Nah, he don't look dangerous. Dangerous? Why, well, I don't understand. Now, remember, you, Grandpa, I... anything you say can be used against you. And if you don't want to come along nice and quiet... <laughs> nice going, Joe. What was that, Tom? Uh... I said, let's go on. Let's get going. We, uh, we gotta go along with them now, but we'll find out what's behind all this later. We most certainly will. Sir. Why, this is most embarrassing. Uh, it's outrageous. Come along, Grandpa. We'll take good care of you. We have a special little place for you. Tom, uh, do you think I'd better see if he has any dangerous weapons? Hmm? No, no. I, no. I believe Mr. Birthday is unarmed today. What? Today? You know I never carry a gun, Tom. <laughs> When, when, I, when I see the chief, I'll give him a thorough tongue lashing. i better make a note of that. Threaten the chief. Oh, this is really one of your bad days, Mr. Birthday. Have you remembered that stuff that slipped your mind yet? How can I think clearly with these men and their high-handed methods? Well, and... I'll try to think of something to straighten out this little mix-up. Well, thank heaven one of us can still think. I've passed the stage of calm coherence, and I'm rapidly entering that of frantic frustration. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank goodness you got them to turn off that siren. It was a little raucous, wasn't it? Tom, it doesn't seem to me we're going in the direction hmm? of police headquarters. Oh, you're absolutely right, Mr. Birthday. Joe. Yes, Tom? Turn in here. Maybe we can talk this thing over. Here? Uh, all the way Why? in tight, Tom? Yeah, right, all the way in. Good heavens, Tom. All these people, the, the municipal stadium. And there's the chief, Tom. Huh? I'd better stop right here. Uh, where's the chief? I want to see him. I demand no, no, my no, rights no, as a citizen. Now, keep quiet, Mr. Birthday. You better stay in the car. Uh, Joe, Tom. isn't that the uh, microphone for the stadium's public address system? Now, what do you know? Yeah. Sure it is, Tom. Here you are. Well, thanks. Tom, what are you going to do? Now, quiet. Now, now, you just hang on for a moment. Now, quiet, everybody, please. 
Quiet, please. May I have your attention? Thank you. Now, here in this police cruiser with me is the man you've been waiting for. Tom, please, be careful. Do you know what you're doing? It's Mr. Birthday, and he's in a very bad predicament. All day long, he's been worried over something he thinks he should remember. Tom, of all people to think and that so, you... so, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, we have brought him here for one special reason. Will you tell him what he's forgotten? I forgot. Uh, it's my whole yeah. birthday. It's today. Oh, this is a surprise. <laughs> this, this is wonderful. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> of all the things to forget, you, the guy who remembers everyone else. <laughs> again. You know, we all like to feel we can be useful and helpful. And one of the great joys in life is knowing that we're useful and helpful in an undertaking that's worthwhile. None of us can be happy if we live only for ourselves, because the job of living comes from giving. Yes, giving ourselves to something we know is bigger and better, worthier and more enduring than we are. That's why the greatest joy in living is giving ourselves to God. And you know, when a family joins together to give themselves to God in family prayer, they're united in a joy and happiness that only family prayer can bring. I guess we all know from experience that it's true. Whatever we give to others comes back to us in some way or another, and whatever we give to God comes back a hundredfold. So let's give God a little time in our, our, our homes each day, and let's take a little time out to join together with our family for family prayer then we'll really know how true it is that the family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Jean Lockhart and Jean Raymond for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Jack Price for writing tonight's play and to Max Taylor for his music. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Nina Barra, Harry Lang, Jerry Farber, Johnny McGovern, Bobby Ellis, Philip Bernard, and Bob Shannon. Next week, our Family Theatre star will be Ronald Reagan in The Tin Whistle, and your host will be Lloyd Nolan. This is Anne Blythe saying good night, and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater star will be Ronald Reagan with Lloyd Nolan as host. Merrill Ross speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.